Hello guys and welcome to another episode of the Montreal Canadiens franchise series here on the channel. This is the second episode of the fifth season. We st in the last episode we started we simulated one month into the first se or into the fifth season, sorry. And we actually had a decent record of 6-3 and 2. Now, uh, we need to take care of a couple things like I said in the last episode. Our cap is not we're right against the cap here, so uh, like I said in the last episode, we need to trade Victor Mete because he's a 79 now, I believe. Let's just take a look again. He hasn't grown. He's still the same as he was when he, we first picked up when he was 20 years old four years ago. He is a top 4 D-man, but his role is top 6 and he just hasn't grown. And we have Callum Foote um, available for us to sign as an RFA, but we just haven't been able to sign him yet because... Um, What's it called? Because, like I said, uh, we don't have we're right against the cap. So, I'm gonna trade Mete, and I was also thinking of trading another uh, forward here who is worth a decent amount. What is his name again? Zaitsev. We signed him uh, in free agency last year, I believe. He's low lead. We don't even know his overall. He doesn't even play in the in the AHL, so we might as well trade him. And I was looking to trade him to a to a Western Conference team, I think it was, who was it, was it Edmonton, no, it was, actually, no, it wasn't a Western Conference team, it was the New York Islanders, the New York Islanders are trying to make the playoffs, they're D-man, they, I think, it looks like they will, they would need Victor Mete, basically, their D-man are pretty poor, I mean, they have Pulock, Wild, Letty, who's getting older, Noah Dobson, Zaboro, we don't know how good he is, and Tony D'Angelo, so they, they need a little bit of depth as far as D, uh, as far as their decor, yeah, so they want to give away their first round pick, so I'm going to see uh, if they would be willing to accept a low lead player and, and Mete for a first rounder, let's see if they would accept this, Trey rejected, so, um, so they said they're, it's not very interesting, so let's see if I offer them Maybe a third rounder. We have a few third rounders. So Calgary Flames third rounder. Let's see if this they would accept this. Trey rejected. Okay. So they don't really want to get get rid of their th um, first rounder. Uh, I also saw the New York, the New Jersey Devils. Sorry, they wanted to get rid of their f first rounder next year. Is that? I feel like that's worth more than the New York Islanders first rounder. Let's see if this would accept. Okay, so they did accept uh, the 2024, I believe, first rounder. So we have now traded Victor Mete. So I'm going to go to roster moves now really quickly and call up one of our D-men. Uh, yeah, probably Romanov. Wait, is Romanov uh, two-way? Yeah, he is. Okay, he's a, he's a two-way right now. So regardless, uh, Romanov, I'm going to do best lines for now because we're going to sign Cal Foot anyway. So Romanov, like I said, he's almost good enough to be playing in the NHL, but not yet. We're gonna we're gonna give him one more year. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, okay. Calfoot is not under contract right now with us, but he is a free agent, so we're gonna try and sign him, and see if um, he will accept her. What am I doing here? Sorry, I'm trying to go to free agents, and we're gonna see if he's gonna accept our proposal. Of, yeah, we're gonna give him exactly what he wants. So. Okay, we're, we're going to give him $2 because that's all we have uh, one way. We don't have 2.175. Hopefully, he accepts. We're going to play Romanov for these first uh, couple games here while we simulate. I'm just going to do the lines with Romanov in here, and then I'll bring you guys back. So just give me a second here. All right, guys. So I inserted Romanov into the lineup. So let's simulate a couple days here, see how we do. We're going to do an in-game simulation. Why not? Madison Square Garden. November 1st, hopefully we can get a W here with Romanov in, uh, on the decor, first period, 0-0, zero, zero, 9-7 to seven the shots for us, second period, 2-1, Victor Rask and Jonathan Duran score on Calvin Pickard, that's her ex, uh, second string goalie, and Sven Barchi scores on Price, 24-17 to the shots, can we get a W in the third, we don't, McCarron, Michael McCarron scores on Price, that's crazy. Uh, can we win in overtime? And they do, unfortunately. Uh, Chiddle or whatever. 
I think he's a rookie this year, and the New York Rangers beat us in overtime. So that's okay. Uh, let's see me now up to the next game. Hopefully, Cal Foot accepts our offer. I'm going to be really mad if he says no. But I remember last time I checked. Okay, Cal Foot accepted. Uh, okay, so perfect. I was going to say, I remember last time Cal Foot wanted 1.6. Uh, so he, it definitely looks like it went up. His value or his price went up. But yeah, so now we're going to add Cal Foot. He should be in the NHL now, right? Also, I wanted to show you guys quickly. Kokaniemi is up to an 84. Or 89, sorry. So we're going to scratch Romanov and put... Oh, where is Foot? Is Foot in the AHL now? Are you kidding me? Hopefully, we don't have to like bring him up and sh and have to go through waivers. I think we if he would only have to go through waivers if he is sent down. But let's see here. Where is Foot? Okay, let's see. Let me just quickly read here. You'll require to fix your lines. Waiver eligible. Okay, so Calfoot is no waivers. Romanov is waivers, though. Are you kidding me? Wow, so Romanov is waiver eligible now. Uh oh. So, I might just keep Romanov as a 7th D, honestly, because. He is waiver eligible, so I'm going to put Osterley instead then. So Kyle Foot, it says waivers, yes. So let's see here. No waivers for Kyle Foot. Cal, to call him up to the NHL, there's no waivers. Osterley, there's waivers, but whatever. Uh, okay, so yeah, Romanov is still here. Uh, let's see if, what's his name, went through. Osterley went through, I think, with no issues. And calling, um, what's his name up? Cal Foot, there was no issues. But I didn't want to lose Romanov for nothing. So I've kept him in the NHL for now. Uh, let's see how good Foot is. Do we know his his exact overall? Let's see. Okay, we don't know yet. But we're just going to simulate a couple weeks here. And see if we know his exact overall. We've signed him for one year, $2 million contract. That's kind of annoying that we have to... Now we basically have to get rid of Romanov now, I think, guys. Because um, otherwise he is waivers exempt. No, he's not He's not waiver exempt, actually. We lose against Colorado. Uh, we need to bounce back here against Winnipeg. We do in a shootout. 7-4-3. and three. We can't... We got to keep... We got to go on a winning streak here, guys. Edmonton. Okay, Romanov for a second and a third. I'm going to have to decline that. I'm trying to get maybe a first for Romanov. We lose against... Um, What's his name there? Jeremy Helvig has been injured. We'll just replace the player. But we lose against the Oilers, 7-5-3. and three. We lose against the Florida Panthers. We went against the Ducks, though. We can't, we can't go on a losing streak. we got to go on a winning streak here, guys. Come on. St. Louis, can we get a win in St. Louis? We do 8-2. Big win there. Uh, Helvig has been, uh, is back now, but we, we won't care about that. Another win against the uh, Jets. We need to win again here against the Kings. We do. It's a four-game winning streak. We gotta keep it going here. Eleven, six, and three. Uh, he's reviewed the class, so let's stop the simulation. I actually want to. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna go all the way up to the first, and then I'm gonna send my scouts, which I forgot to do in the last episode. I don't want to stop the simulation while we're winning, so that was a good idea. We went against Tampa. Can we beat the New Jersey Devils? We do. Thirteen, six, and three. We win against Boston. Come on, guys. Let's end up, end off the month with a win, please, here against the Florida Panthers. And we do. So that is... That's eight games in a row that we have won. Uh, it's now December 1st, and any player who received a qualifying offer from their team did not come to terms or prohibited from joining the NHL until, last, until next year, I mean. We did sign Cal Foote, so we're good now. First and foremost, speak talking about Kyle Foot. I want to check how good his overall is first. Uh, yeah, let's see his overall. Where is he? Eighty-three. So that was a good idea to have Kyle Foot uh, signing with us and trading uh, Victor Mete. His defensive awareness is only eighty-four. Even though he's a two-way defenseman, I don't know what what's really good about him. I guess his physical is really good. I want to see his uh, 
what's it called here his advanced stats I want to see giveaways to takeaways it's not awful eight to four so two to one not terrible or I think yeah I think this is a good idea to have or here playing as a top four his role is a top four so we'll put him as a top four now hopefully he can get some points he hasn't really been getting too many points 29 I don't know, 15 giveaways to 7 takeaways, not bad. Not a lot of giveaways for Orteo. He actually didn't have any points until we brought Foot in, and now he has 2 points, 2 assists. So we're looking at some growth out of Orteo. Hopefully we can get that, and then Sanheim can stabilize Foot. So this this might be our uh, shutdown pair, Sanheim and Foot. So that looks pretty good. So he's an 83, so that's really good. Uh, I'm just going to send my... Um, my scouts so I'm gonna do that really quickly guys and I'll bring you guys back once I have that ready so give me a second here alright guys so I just wanted to show you quickly the trade block for us we decided to put Sondheim uh, on our trade block just because at 5.230 for an 84 for a third pairing D-man if we can trade maybe bundle a trade for uh, of him and Romanov for maybe an 86 87 second uh, second line or second pairing D-man or 86 even that'd be good I also put Gallagher because we're looking to train him maybe this year or next one but if not if we if we can't find anything any offers too good we'll just trade Roman off by itself um, because obviously we don't want to lose him and we want him we would want him to grow ideally but uh, he is a depth defenseman so or he's actually top six role at 79 though but we need uh, <coughs> sorry we need uh, him to grow and we he's obviously not going to play with us because we have a we need to we need to win and we need to, we're a champion champion contender here so we're sitting first in their Atlantic division with 33 points after that eight game winning streak uh, we still haven't lost so let's just simulate another month and we might as well see if there are any offers that come through for those three players that I added to the trade block uh, okay, I also signed a couple scouts, so you guys will see some messages there. Another win, nine-game winning streak. We beat 6-1 the Washington Capitals. Another okay, another um, okay, another two scouts there. We're playing against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Can we beat them? We lose four nothing, so not ideal there. Uh, let's just take a quick look at the draft class. Uh, I sent okay, I did send someone to scout this guy which I believe they're done now, and we know exactly his overall medium elite. We also have Caden Ryder, a sniper left wing, medium elite as well. We have another medium elite player here, top six. So I've sent a few players. I think I've sent some guys from Russia. So, uh, yeah, we need another guy f from Finland in the SHL. Um, maybe another guy from the USA West. We can send one as well. E-B-E-L, whatever that is. Uh, but we have a lot of these guys scouted, which is good. At least in the top first round. Uh, we have this guy, Wingles, Aaron Wingles, of the Owen Sound Attack. Hopefully, if we finish around, uh, Stanley Cup champions are around there. We may be able to draft um, around the 30th to 29th spot. Uh, this guy looks like, if he's actually a medium elite, that would be perfect to grab him. Uh, I don't think medium for this franchise guy, Tommy Pasikal. We have someone scouting him, which is good. Another D-man, Jesse Brewer. We're scouting him. But we have nothing too clear as of yet because obviously we just started to send our scouts not too long ago. Let me see if we have any gems or busts. Nothing yet because obviously the season just started for these young players as well. So let's just skip simulating. We gotta bounce back here after losing against the Tampa Bay Lightning when we do. We beat the Leafs 4-3. Can we win against the Detroit Red Wings? We lose 2-1. So they kept us quiet there. We gotta bounce back. We lose against the Florida Panthers. Okay, we gotta stop losing here. 17-10 and 3. We gotta bounce back against the LA Kings here. We don't. Okay, so we're on a four-game losing streak here. Come on, let's beat the New Jersey Devils. Come on, guys. In New Jersey. Can we get a big road win here? Nicholas Raw has been injured. Okay, so we'll just replace the player there. Can we bounce back? We lose in a shootout, so we at least pick up a point. But we got to bounce back and get a win here as soon as possible. We do against the 
Ottawa Senators. We lose against the Boston Bruins, though. Um, not what I wanted to see. 18, 12, and 4. I may stop the simulation after this Vegas game if we lose. Marcus Foligno, 2 million. No, thank you. It's a little much. And we lose. Okay, so I'm going to stop the simulation and see what's going on here. Come on, stop. Okay, I, I clicked stop, but it simulated the game against the Colorado Avalanche anyways. Not the best month there. We're still sitting second, but Boston has uh, taken uh, first spot here in the uh, in the Atlantic Division. I want to take a quick look at our players and see who's doing well. It looks like Sagan has started to pick it up again. He has 21 goals in 36 games, 15 assists for Sagan. Jonathan Duran's doing good again, 30 points. Hempus Lindholm, 28 points. Nick Suzuki's still doing pretty good on the third on the second line. Philip Forsberg starting to do, to perform a little bit more. Uh, hopefully he can keep it going. Kakanyemi needs to keep it going a little more. Uh, Gallagher, Paling, Domi. So Domi's actually slowed down quite a bit here. I'm expecting a lot more out of Domi. Pull you Yarvi. Honka, so that's it for us. Glebov, two goals, six assists. Calfoot, nothing for him. Zero points, zero assists. Uh, Orteo, three assists. So we gotta expect a little bit more out of those guys. No offers from Ro for Romanov, though. Sorry about that. No offers for Romanov, so maybe I'm gonna do one game at a time here and see how we're performing in the in game simulation. So let's see. First period. 1-1, Nick Suzuki scores, Barshi scores for them, 12-11 to 11 the shots. 2-1, Nick Suzuki scores again. He is unreal in, when I do in-game simulations. And we beat the New York Rangers 2-1, so that's good to go back on the winning column here. Price delivered once again the goods. 32 saves, Suzuki 2 goals, and the goalie for the Rangers got the third star. So we bounce back and get another win. We're still 3-6-1. In our last ten, so we gotta, we gotta keep going. We gotta go on a winning streak. So we're we've won two games in a row, but we gotta beat the Pittsburgh Penguins here in Montreal. They don't have the best record, but their their last ten is actually decent, six three and one. So it's the opposite of us. So we'll do another in-game simulation. Why not? We had luck in the last in-game simulation, so let's do it here. First period, three to one. Sagan Lundstrom or Lundstrom. And Paling score. Evgeny Malkin scores for them. Second period. 4-3. Dougie Hamilton scores for us. Boom Jenner and Evgeny Malkin scores for them. 25-23 to 23 is shots for Pittsburgh. Let's hold them off here on the third, please. And we do Lundestrom. Or, yeah, Lundestrom scores for us. And Malkin gets a hattie for them. But it wasn't enough. Carey Price gets a W. Uh, Lundestrom gets four points in the in the win there. Pretty good, pretty good performance from our fourth line. Paling had two points and Malkin had a hat trick. So, pretty entertaining game uh, between the Montreal Canadiens and the Pittsburgh Penguins. We're four, five, and one now in our last ten. Let's keep it going and doing the in-game simulation. Why not? I want to finish. Uh, ideally, I would like to finish first uh, in our call, in our division, just so we have home ice for the first two rounds at least. But uh, we just got to keep winning here, and hopefully that uh, Toronto starts to lose a little more. Or not Toronto, Boston starts to lose a little more. So let's simulate the first period here. one nothing. Jonathan Duran scores on Ilya Samsonov. Second period, 4-2. Uh, we remember this Enroth guy. He's supposed to be elite, I believe. Pull URV scores, Suzuki scores, and Kakanyemi scores for us. Nice to see Kakanyemi get on the board. Nikita Sherback, the ex-Montreal Canadian, scores on Price. Third period, 5-2, Suzuki scores again. So let's see the three stars. I think Suzuki had a two-goal game. A three-point game, that's pretty good. So it looks like the second line actually stepped up, which we wanted to see that. Hampus Lindholm has been injured, though, with a hip pointer. So we will actually... Good thing we still have Romanov here. Because we will put him as... Um, as a replacement, so let's just put Romanov here. We'll just have him substitute in all lines, whatever. It's uh, we just gotta keep it going here. So I don't want to slow down the simulation. We've gone on a five or four or five game winning streak, so 
We were supping in uh, Nashville at the Bridgestone Arena on January 3rd. Let's do this simulation here, guys. I don't know if P.K. Subban's on that team. I guess he was a UFA, so probably not. But first period, 0-0, 16 to 5 the shots. Second period, 1-1. Kakanemi scores again for us on Saros, and Ryan Ellis scores on Price. 33 to 11 the shots, though. So we're dominating them in third period now. 1-1 still. We're going to overtime. 39-22 to the shots. Five minutes to go in overtime. Come on, get a win. We don't, so it's going to go to a shootout. And they get the W. Eli Tolvan then scores on Price in the shootout. And that was a really low, low scoring game. And looks like Saros actually stood on his head. And Dougie Hamilton has been injured now. So, what else is new here? Uh... I think I'm gonna have to call up one of the um, one of those players. I think it might be what's his name from the AHL, Osterley. It's gonna have to be Osterley. Baldwin actually has gone up to a 78, low elite. I think I don't know if he was always that, but that's pretty good. So we're gonna call up Osterley now. Uh, he should be. He should have gone through waivers, and he should pass. Or I think when we send him down, he'll have to go through waivers. But we most likely won't have to send him down. So, yeah, Willem Carrier is, is actually our D, man. So, we're going to put Osterly instead of Carrier. So, I'm actually going to do this really quickly. Give me a second, guys. All right, guys. So, just giving a little bit more time. Uh, well, I inserted uh, Osterly and Romanov. But I wanted to show you. Well, I'm going to give a little bit of time. Power play time to Jesse Pugliarv on the second power play. Uh, hopefully Hamilton and uh, what's his name Lindholm step up or heal back quickly I don't know when I think Hamilton's supposed to get back next month so we're going to be quite a bit of while without him also since we lost against the National Predators I'm going to do the in, I'm going to do the regular simulation again one month hopefully up to the, the Minnesota game here on the 31st let's beat the San Jose Sharks can we do that 5-4 win, okay, good stuff. Can we beat the Ottawa Senators? We lose 3-1, or 3-2, I mean. 23-14-5, and five. come on, guys, let's keep it going here. 3-2 loss against the Chicago Blackhawks. If we lose one more game, I'm going to make maybe make some changes here. Okay, we win against the New York Islanders. We win against the Panthers. Can we win against Boston? That's a big game, guys. Boston is supposed to be... Okay, Lindholm, actually, I'm going to wait off because uh, I don't want Lindholm to get re-injured, so I'm going to wait off. Uh, but, yeah, Boston has a really good record, so hopefully we can beat them when we do. Okay, I'm going to let these two games go again uh, and see what happens. So they want to offer me Dumoulin a second and a third for Gallagher in a second. No, thank you. Okay, so we lose against... Okay, so that's two losses in a row. So I'm going to view the draft class again. See if we have any more. Okay, so we have a lot more information now uh, from these guys. So a lot, a lot of these players have been unlocked now. But uh, not everybody yet. This guy. Caden Cairns. Or Cairns. Medium Elite. Three bars. So he's almost sure that we are. We're almost sure that he is. A medium elite. A couple more medium elites here in the second round. <coughs> second round. Sorry, where was that franchise guy that we saw? I don't even remember. Another low elite here. Maybe if I search him up like this. So a few medium elites. I swear we saw a franchise before, didn't we? We should have pinned the guy. Okay, we don't have him, but never mind. Uh, I'll just stop the simulation here, guys, because we lost two games in a row here, 26, 17, and 5, but we were going to bring back Hampus Lindholm into our lineup, so just give me a second here. All right, guys, so Lindholm's back into our lineup, so let's just do it in a game simulation now from now on until hopefully we can start winning here doing the end game simulation. We have a game against the Carolina Hurricanes, first period. 2-1, Gallagher and Sagan scores. Fetchenkov scores on Odinger. Second period, 2-1. 20-18, the shots. Odinger's playing good. Keep it going, please. Third period, 
2-2. Vudalama scores on Odinger. 34-29 the shots for us now. Five minutes of overtime. No winner yet. Shootout. And they get the win. Svechnikov scores in the shootout. So another loss here. Let me make sure Price is back in net. Odinger actually has some really good stats as well. But obviously Price is a higher rated goalie. So we want him in net. So... Price still hasn't been hasn't dropped any any overalls yet, but he's 19, 15, and five, so pretty good. 2.56 and 0.9.5, uh, 1.4 save percentage. You guys take a look here at Odinger stats: eight wins in 13 games. That's pretty good. I don't need to show you exactly everything, but that's pretty good. So now uh, we're gonna do another in-game simulation against the Minnesota Wild at the end of January here. Let's see where we're sitting. Actually, it's going to be after the All-Star game, so it's going to be a long break. I, I want to see where we're sitting after the All-Star break. Okay, 58 points. Uh, six points ahead of the Tampa Bay Lightning. Dougie Hamilton is back, so we're just going to continue. I want to make sure that he is fully healed before I even uh, bring him back into the lineup. Because if he has a medical kit... Uh, the medical kit um, sign, then I'm not going to bring him back. So let me see if he's good. Is he good to go? No, okay. He's definitely not good to go yet. So I shouldn't have even tried. But yeah, anyways, okay. So Romanov is back. Uh, Hamilton is not back just yet because we want to give him a little bit more time to rest and fully heal. Because, yeah, we don't want him playing injured. So first period. 2-1, Granlin and Belpedio score on Price. Sagan scores on Kakinen. I think that's one of the old Buffalo Sabres goalies. At least I think it's one of their prospects right now. I might be wrong, but second period. 3-2, Pull your RV scores. Greenway scores on Price. Come on, let's bounce back here in the third. 4-4, four, four, Dano, Pull your RV and Forsberg scores. Come on, good job, Pull your RV. Now that he's playing on the power play, he has two goals on this game here. Can we win in the overtime? We don't. Can we get a shootout win? And we do. Finally, Jonathan Duran scores on Kakinen. So nice to see that we got a shootout win. Pull Yarvi the first star of the game. Forsberg the second star. And Jonathan Duran the third. So nice to see that here. Let's simulate against, uh, the game against uh, Columbus Blue Jackets. I'm not going to make any changes, maybe. Yeah, I'm not going to make any changes. We'll let Hamilton heal up properly. And once he is, then we'll see what happens. First period, 2-1 for Columbus. Bull Yarvi scores again. Dubois and Yaskin score on Price still for them. 13-10 the shots for them. Second period, 5-4. Wow. Paling scores. Sagan scores twice. Panarin, Nugent Hopkins, and Murray score. 5-4 the game. Uh, after two, can we bounce back in the third? And we don't. 7-5. Honka scores, but Ian Cole and Sony Milano score on the uh, on an empty netter here. Let's see the three stars. Sagan had two goals. Dubois had two points, and Jaskin had two points as well. Pretty bad win. Uh, pretty bad loss. I mean, Jonathan Drenna has been injured now. Wow. Okay. So I'm gonna do all these lines first. I'm gonna insert back. What's his name? Um. What's his name? I can't think right now. Um. Crap. Hamilton, sorry, and I'm going to put Carrier in because he is the other guy that we have to bring back, just substitute. So we've decided to add Domi uh, to the first line, pull Yarvi because he's playing well, and then Glebov, I think he has more potential to produce. Although Lundestrom is actually playing really good as well. How good is Glebov doing? So they're both doing about the same. Three go 13 points. What's Lundstrom? Yeah, 13. they both have 13 points, so that's pretty good. But I'm going to keep, uh, keep Lundestrom with Paling and Carrier. And then the third, I mean, I mean, and the, uh, what's it called? The decor will take away whatever his name is. Um, crap, I can't think right now. Uh, ha uh, Romanov and put Hamilton back. And we're going to put him on the power play as well. So just give me a second, guys. All right, so pretty costly loss against the Columbus Blue Jackets. We lost one of our best players in Jonathan Duray. But uh, I'm giving a little bit more responsibility to uh, Jesse Pugliarvi. And also Hamilton was fully healed. So uh, we'll simulate a week. Durant should be back by the 9th, I believe. So 
Hopefully we can get back into the winning ways here. We're playing against the Islanders again. And I think I said a losing a loss against the Islanders. It was a loss against the Jackets. So 27, 18, and 6. Jordan is back already, but we're going to continue. You don't want him to get re-injured. 4-3 loss. Can we bounce back against the Washington Caps? They have a really good team. 38, 11, and 3. We win in the shootout, so that's good. A first rounder. Gallagher in a third for Michael Granlin. A third and a fourth. No, thank you. And we lose against the call or the Carolina Hurricanes. So we're 28, 20, and 6. So 20 losses is quite a bit in my opinion. Uh, we're still sitting second though. Our, our division's not the greatest. But um, I would like for us to start winning a little more. Go on a winning streak and end off the season good. So let me see here. Drawing back. I'm not going to scratch Domi, obviously. I'm going to scratch Carrier, 76. So not a terrible player. But, yeah, he's going to be scratched off. And then I'm going to put Drawing here. Domi here. We're going to have the same lines as we had before. So we have a healthy lineup now. So just give me a second, guys. All right, so Drawing is fully healed now. I didn't realize we're so far ahead. We're on February 9th now. Um, just a couple more weeks before the trade deadline. Uh, let me see here. I may have to trade Romanovs pretty soon here. Um, let's browse the trading block together, actually, guys. Let's see what's what's up, what's around here. Uh, nothing too interesting here. Tori Krug is on the block for for the Boston Bruins. Carolina has um, Falk. Chicago had Taves. Colorado has Dadonov. Nothing too crazy. Radulov's on the block. If I am to get a a veteran, I would have to. What's it called? I would have to retain a lot of salary. But like I said before, I wanna maybe see if there's a good. Second pairing D-man, maybe 86, 85. Maybe better than... Um, better than uh, what we have at the moment right now. What is... What's his name? The guy from the Philadelphia Flyers. I can't remember right now, but... My mind's going blank, but... Sanheim. Sanheim, that's right. Sanheim. Ho so hopefully someone better than Sanheim. Look at Michael DiPietro. It's supposed to be 85. I doubt it. But he has a medium starter um, potential. Other than that, Jacob Truba, 83, so that's not good enough. Ten of 84, not good enough either. Uh, so, yeah, nothing too crazy here. Uh, I may simulate all the way up to the trade deadline and then see what's available then. So, just give me a sec. Actually, no, I'm not going to stop. stop the video here. I'm just going to simulate. So we have we've lost against the Carolina Hurricanes. We need some wins here, guys. Against the uh, Arizona Coyotes, we need a win here. I think they're rebuilding, so we do beat them. We win against the uh, St. Louis Blues. We do 30 to 20, 30 20 to and six. Gallagher, Denisenko, a third and a sixth. How good is Denisenko though? So let's take a look here. He must not be worth a lot. He is he low elite. He is low elite, 83. Is he playing in the NHL? Looks like he's actually killing it. 38 points. So left wing. The thing is that I don't want to get rid of Gallagher. He actually is a good simulator, though. And he gets paid not very much. So why is he worth so little? Okay, a third and a sixth. He's basically worth as much as Gallagher. Low elite. I don't know if he's going to grow anymore, though. Gallagher's 84, top six. Second line forward, playing on our third line. How good is he doing? 23 goals, 18 assists, though. So he's performing. I'm going to hold off on this. If he is available, I may look to get him, but not right now. 30, 20, and 6. Can we beat the Natural Predators? We do. So we've gone on a nice little winning streak there. Uh, second and a third. I'm trying to get a first for Romanov, guys. So I'm going to say no to that. If not, I'll just get a second and a third. No worries. But like I said, I'm trying to package Romanov and Sandheim for a better player.
Gallagher in a sixth for a sec for two seconds. No thanks. So Gallagher has some, quite a bit of value, so that's pretty good. It's nice to see. Um, and we got two losses there, okay. Can we bounce back and beat the Flames? Come on. They have a losing record. We should be able to beat them. Let's not get too cocky. It's taking forever, though, for some reason. Okay, we beat, it, beat them in overtime. Gallagher for two seconds again. No thanks. We win be a big against the uh, Anaheim Ducks. And then we'll simulate. We'll do the in-game simulation here for this last game against the Dallas Stars. So 33-22-6. That's a pretty good record. Um, Dallas Stars has basically a 500 record. Let's, I just want to take a quick look at how it's looking for us in the division. 72 points, 8 points behind the Boston Bruins. So it's not, they haven't, we're not fully out of the division, but we're kind of far away as well. So we're also, we're going to do the in game simulation for these guys here. 5 3 and 2 for the Dallas Stars in the last 10. Let's see. Let's go to goals. First period. 0-0. Zero, zero. At 13 and 9 the shots. We're playing at the American Airlines Center or Arena, whatever it's called. 13-9 the shots for them. Second period here. 1-1. One, one, Jonathan Duran scores. Gurianov scores on price. And we get the W Philip Forsberg that gets the game winning goal. Good news here. Price gets another first star. Bishop the second. Philip Forsberg with his game-winning goal. Gets the third star. So it's nice to see a win. Cam Hillis has been injured. so But it's nice to see a win uh, before the trade deadline. What we wanted to see exactly. Let's see how far away we are from the Boston Bruins. So we're six points behind. Not terrible. I'm going to do my due diligence. And I'll see if I can bring anybody for I'm going to just take a look at the trade block again and I'll bring you guys back once I have a trade ready so give me a second I just wanted to quickly show you guys take a look here at Klimberg 86 overall he's probably 87 88 he's a, his trade value is way too much though for us 30 years old 7.645 uh, for five more years we can't afford him but I just wanted to show you quickly him same as Vlasic 87 one bar though so he's probably around 83 84 so He's dropped tremendously. We're not going to get him. He has still has four years. And also wanted to show you Toronto. They have Mitch Marner and Austin Matthews on the block. That's crazy. High lead and medium lead players. 20, 20, both 25, actually. So that's crazy. Nothing too interesting here, though. So I'm just going um, to just gonna see what's out there as well. Just by myself, I'll bring you guys back if I, have, if I see anybody interesting. So give me a second here. All right, guys, so here trying to trade Romanov and Sanheim, which New Jersey both wants. For this hidden gem here, Ty Smith, top four, one year left. Look at his stats, though. 50 points in 62 games, offensive defenseman. He is insane, it seems like. 91 defensive awareness. We Obviously, we don't know exactly how good he is. He has three bars, but he's around a 90, 88 uh overall or not overall but points for defensive awareness so i think he is a stud potential top four we know that his role is supposed to be top six but his overall is supposed to be 86 and he seems to be a really good simulator so i think this guy can be a stud he's actually not worth a lot so you guys can see here not worth a lot they want sanheim and romanov if ty smith is around eight, uh, Sandheim's only 84, so if Ty Smith, he's supposed to be 86 with three bars. If he even is 80, 84, he can actually be okay for our, um, what's it called? For our um, a third pairing with Orteo or whatever. So I think Orteo's in it, or Calfoot, either way. And we also include this uh, Blake Weber, I think his name is. Byron Weber, 71 overall, 6'3". 212 minor top 6d man he has a potential of medium top 4 20 years old he's basically romanov romanov is 23 though so he's three years older so he's basically the same player as romanov so we would uh basically not lose a what's it called the top 4d man because we'd gain, gain him back with byron weber so let's see if this would work out trade rejected okay uh, you aren't completely off base though, so that's good. If we include a third rounder, 
we have a few thirds so hopefully this would work out they want the Calgary Flames third okay I don't know why that didn't happen yeah they want the Calgary Flames third so let's see if this would work out trade rejected the value is just a little bit low for us so let's see would they want a second for next year so they would want our second the second for next year for us so let's see Romanoff, Sanheim, and the second from next year for Ty Smith and Weber. We we'll also save a lot of caps for um, trading Sanheim, so let's see if this would work out. Trade rejected. Okay, so you have given us a fair offer. If we accepted this proposal, we would we would have to make some roster changes, which includes putting Victor Mete on waivers. Because of this, we don't feel, we feel like it's not worth it. So, if I include a third, try to entice them a little bit more. Let's see if this would work. Okay, so I guess they really don't want to. Uh, let me see here. So if we take out, if we take out Romanov and the, if we just do Sondheim for. Ty Smith straight up with this go through trade accepted okay so we believe this transaction will contribute to our success here in New Jersey so that's good uh, Sandheim in a third for Ty Smith uh, hopefully Ty Smith is around the overall that we think he is he should be uh, I don't know why I told us to go here let's go to edit lines so this was a pretty big decision, but uh, I think it will contribute to our success for sure. We add a offensive defenseman here, 86 supposed to be. We'll see if he is. Even if he's not even if he's 84, it's even better, you know, than uh, Sanheim because he's uh, four years younger than Sanheim already, and he is even though he's his role is top six, he has more points than Sanheim so. I think this is a win situation for us. Now the next player we're going to trade is Romanov. So just give me a second, guys. All right, guys. Here trying to trade Romanov for two seconds. They want to get rid of their seconds. I don't think they'll be able to sign Romanov after this here. If you guys take a look at their cap space. So we may be able to find him back in free agency now that I think about it. They want to get rid of their two seconds. So let's see if this would work out. Or should we try and get a first from next year? Let me see. Um, I'm also thinking ahead from next year so yeah let's see if we can get a first for next year we Buffalo has a lot of contracts to uh, a lot of players to sign I believe a lot of their top players have actually never mind I thought a lot of their top players well Hamannick is off the books here Thompson okay never mind but so I guess a lot of their contracts expire this year so never mind it might be a good team so actually just give me a second i'm gonna keep going and try and find a team that i think is gonna struggle and they want romanov so give me a second here all right guys here trying to trade romanov to chicago for a first and moncada whatever it's just a ahl guy i just needed to include him to make the roster space uh the value is just a bit low, so we're not too far off. Let's see. Do they want anybody? Actually, we can't give them anybody here. We just have to give them, uh, what's it called, um, draft picks. So third and Romanoff are, and moving up to another first from this year. Chicago is a good team, but I don't know. We'll see. 34, 21, and 7. So they may drop off a little bit. We'll see. They want to get rid of their first. I was going to maybe looking to get uh, the 2024 first, but they don't want to get rid of it. So we lose Romanov, unfortunately, but we gain a first rounder. We trade our third. I think they'll say yes to this. Let's see. Trade accepted. Okay. So we get a first rounder for Romanov. Unfortunately, we couldn't keep him because if we sent him down, he was going to, um, um, like I said, get uh, claimed off waivers. So uh, let me see if we have the scratch players here oh surely okay Moncada okay perfect I think that's good I think that's enough business for us 
I don't even think we have the cap space necessary anyways, so... Uh, what I'm thinking though is maybe have Ty Smith replace Paul Yarvi here. Uh, I'm gonna have... Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna do that actually. We acquired Ty Smith, so might as well give him some time here. Yeah, I'm gonna put uh, Ty Smith here. He's supposed to be 86. Offensive awareness is off the board, so... Hopefully we can have him playing well here. And then instead of Orto, we'll have Smith as well. For the four-man PP. The PK. I'm not going to have Smith. I'm going to have Honka, Orto, Lindholm, Hamilton, Orto, Foot. I think Foot has a decent defensive awareness, right? 84. Actually, not that good, but... We'll see. Should I? Let me see if I can trade for someone a little bit better than Calfoot. Let me see how much. Uh, what's it called? So we have $1 million in cap space. Calfoot. He's not really a great simulator, in my opinion. He's worth a decent amount, though. Low, low, lead, low lead players are worth a decent amount. Uh, I may try and trade him for a better defensive player so just give me a second guys so i'm trying to here to get uh chris tanev he's a little bit old 33 uh decent stats 89 overall for defensive awareness though so he'd be an ideal um third pairing basically um penalty killer but also cal foot other than his defensive awareness his block shots and stick checking are, not, are both 91 He's a better skater. So I'm just trying to see if... Well, Tanev is a really good skater too. Um, I'm just trying to see if this would be even worth it. Because we do have Cal Foot. He's medium elite, so... 24. <sighs> We'd just be getting rid of a, of a young 24-year-old medium elite... Or low elite... Defense. I think he's defensive defenseman, right? Two-way defender. But any either way, though, like the thing is that one night once I traded a uh, Sanheim, I think the players that I have for defensive awareness. I guess Ortio is actually decent. Lindholm is very good. Dougie Hamilton is also decent, and John, Julius Honka. So you know what? And even Ty Smith has really good defensive awareness. It seems like so. You know what? I think I'm not going to trade Cal Foot. It will be shooting myself in the foot because we still have, no pun intended, but we still have Cal Foot um, as an RFA next year if he doesn't want to sign with us, if he wants too much money. So I think that would be a little too much for us to do. Uh, we'll simulate it to the game here against the Calgary Flames, see if there are any offers that come up. But I think we're pretty much done our trades. Uh, we made two trades, traded Sanheim and a third for Ty Smith, and we traded Romanoff for first, I believe, uh, to Chicago. So let's take a quick look. Uh, trade deadline's upon us, so we're not gonna, probably not going to do anything. Uh, okay, so we'll do in uh, one more in-game simulation here against the Flames. Hopefully Ty Smith can get it going here. First period. 2-1, Jankowski, or 2-2, sorry, Jankowski and Novikov score for the Flames. Odinger's in net, and Sagan and Hamilton scores against his old team, so it's pretty good. 12-11, the shots, third period. 3-3, Jamal Smith scores, but Suzuki scores for us. Fourth, uh, third period, I mean. We win 6-3, Honka, Joanne, Pool, Yarvi scores, so good win here for the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, beating the Calgary Flames, we're going to simulate another... Up to the next game, past the trade deadline, Cam Hillis is back, so I'm gonna do the, I'm gonna do the lines for the AHL team later, uh, but I just want to quickly show you before I let you go the activity feed and all the trades that happened. So, all the way from the beginning of no or of uh, December, Malcolm Subban was traded to the Florida Panthers for Ve uh, from Vegas to the Panthers for a second, and Joey Keen. Uh, Kadri was uh, acquired by the New Jersey Devils for a first Weir Kosh and a second from New Jersey. 
Brian Dumoulin was traded from Pittsburgh to Columbus uh, with alongside a third and Dalbeck from Eugene, uh, and then uh, Columbus traded Eugene Froats and a second. Denisenko was finally traded as long, alongside with Raddy uh, for a second and a third and two other. Connor Brown and a second were acquired uh, from Toronto. That was sent to St. Louis for a second and Matt Grislick. Kevin Hayes was sent to uh, Vancouver for and a second and Coleman for Michael DiPietro, second and a third to LA. That's us uh, acquiring Ty Smith and uh, for Travis Sandheim and a third. We also traded Romanov and a third for Mar Moncada and a first. Uh, Ottawa got a second and a third and Brad Kulak from Vegas for Ronnie Powell and a sixth. Pavel Bushnevich was traded to Nashville and alongside a fourth from New York and they got a second and a third. And Josh Morrissey was acquired from, Pitts, uh, from Ve uh, Winnipeg to Pittsburgh for a first and a second. So that's pretty good. Some good trades there in my opinion. Uh, but I think uh, we did some pretty decent business here in the trade deadline. Let me want to see where we're sitting at. 76 points. Uh, for only four points, no, sorry, six points behind Boston, but we have one game played less. I'll quickly show you the player stats to see how we're doing. I know Ty Smith is probably up here, but he that's most mostly uh, acquired um, with his old team, the New Jersey Devils. So we, he has 51 points before uh, the trade. Duran has 52, Sagan has 60. Forsberg 50, Gallagher 45, Suzuki 44, Kakanemi 37, Lindholm, Domi, you guys see these other players. Bull Yarby's playing pretty good in my opinion. Hopefully you can get some growth. Paling as well. Honka, Glebov. Glebov doing decent as well. Lindstrom as well. Ortio, Foot. Moncada is not going to play a carrier as well. Osterly either. So those are that's our team there. And I want to show quickly show you the goalies again. Price has a record of 27, 20, and 5, 9.13 save percentage, and 2.58 goals against. Taking a look here at Odinger, pretty good stats as well, 9, 5, and 1, 0 0.944, 1.65 goals against. So some pretty good stats from our goalies there, but I'm going to leave it at that for now. Let me know what you guys saw of the trade uh, acquiring Ty Smith. I think we needed some help on the power play. So I think that's pretty good. And he is still on his entry-level contract. So I think that's pretty good. We got younger, we got faster, and hopefully we got better offensively. So hopefully we got better overall as well. So thank you so much for watching, guys. Subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And in the next video, we'll have the end of the season. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.